Well, joining me live is Grady Wolf, and she is from Bell Direct. Thank you so much for joining us. So Thanks let's for having me. This yeah. and more. <laughs> Absolutely. So, what is your uh, take on this? It's the battle against inflation. Interest rate rises, obviously. What, what's going to happen in the near future? Do you think it's really interesting? Well, the first prediction was in May or April that they were going to pause and then cut, or pause for a while and then cut in February. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing that flip on its head, and more rate hikes are expected and needed, as Philip Lowe said. And with the cost of living, pre living pressures so high, we are in for really tough times. But understanding that, it's just weathering the storm because with every peak there is a trough and subsequent peak back up again. So understanding that we need to remember that time is tough and times will be tough. We've got a rental crisis, a housing crisis caused by COVID, international borders reopening, um, a lot of expats moving home. So that's created a housing price crisis. But the RBA continues to need to raise interest rates because we have an inflation level of 7%, which is way above the target range of 2 to 3%. And is there a demographic that is feeling it the most? Um, definitely. I think those first-time buyers and uh, people trying to get into the workforce, so in the really low wages growth areas and nursing aged care home, we have a crisis there with Bupa even saying this week that we should waive fees for all nursing students to encourage more people to get into nursing and aged care. So that is one area that's really feeling the brunt and housing prices are through the roof. As you know, we live in Sydney, so it's a very, very big time and I don't even think I'll afford there ever. So so understanding that, we're really feeling it out of our hip pockets. And what are we seeing people do in terms of making changes besides the obvious and, you know, you know, saving the extra pocket, you know, yeah. a cup of coffee or here and there, but um, people going back to work earlier perhaps if they are on maternity leave or yeah. getting a second job? A lot of people are getting second jobs. Maternity leave is definitely being cut short and we're seeing a lot of people come out of retirement. Mm -hmm. So the encouragement is that nurses who have retired should come out of retirement and back into the workforce. And a lot of people who started using their super have actually said, hold on, pause, I need to go back to work. So it is a really, really tough time. I and mean, honestly, economic times have probably never been tougher mm. given how high the interest rates are at the moment at 3.85%. And it's probably hard for a lot of people to hear, but the old phrase, this too will pass. Yes. We've seen it before. As you said, it's a very tough one this particular time. But run us through past it challenges that we've experienced. Yeah, well, the GFC, uh, we obviously felt it at the our hip pockets, but we came through the other side. And as you were saying before, in the 80s, we had interest rates at a record high. So again, we need to weather the storm. And a lot of people are turning to preserving cash and obviously cutting down retail spend, as we saw yesterday. So that is uh, the reason that we're seeing people needing to save cash. And we're seeing a lot of investors actually pull out of the um, stock market. And for that reason, to save cash and have a little bit more to weather this storm that we've got coming forward. But at the the same time there are opportunities in the stock market for income stocks at the moment so income stocks are where you get a steady dividend and consistent dividend to kind of weather through these current tough economic and market times so two stocks that we're seeing are the accent group is one of them and bigger cheese so the accent group is actually in the consumer discretionary sector which naturally would feel the brunt pretty bad because we're seeing retail spend coming down but this company is really strength going from strength to strength their like for like sales are up 16 to 16 24 percent on last year and that's in the fashion retail space so they're really targeting the younger demographic and doing it really well think athletes foot that's exactly where they operate that's one of their brands mm -hmm. so and, um, bigger cheese bigger cheese is one as well now it is a consumer um, a fast-moving consumer goods stock but it actually is a staple as well because they can raise prices and 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 still maintain demand because we all love our cheese, don't we? So um, they're actually seeing high margins this year from mozzarella cheese and cream cheese. So understanding that they're able to pump the margins up on those when the um, pricing of milk has come down a bit. So they've got a 4.5 cents per share dividend and Accent Group had a 12 cents per share dividend this year. So for the first half. So those are kind of income stocks that we like to see our investors investing in instead of pulling out of the market completely. Right. And what about the US debt ceiling? Negotiations in the US uh, certainly we're just talking about today. They've given a four day extension to come to an agreement to raise that. Mm -hmm. What's your prediction on this? Honestly, the US has to raise the debt ceiling. Uh, they can't default on debt, otherwise it will be a massive crisis. If they do default on debt, they will see 150 million jobs lost in the first week of defaulting on debt. So, and that's global jobs. So it's a, not an impact just on the US, it's an impact globally. And we can't, we just can't have that. So they're, they're gonna have to raise it. And um, President Biden has said that the risk of default is very low. They're not going to default. They're just trying to figure out the terms 
terms on which they're going to get through this situation. So we're seeing gl markets globally really volatile and really respond to each day that it's prolonged, that we don't have an, uh, an outcome for it. And Janet Yellen predicts that J uh, June 1 is the date that they'll have to default, which is, again, as President Biden said this week, is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, European markets, Australian markets, Australian markets were down 1.94% this week purely because of riding out this negotiation debt ceiling. So, uh, we, yeah, it'll definitely... They won't default, but as to what the negotiation is, whether they have cutting on spending um, requirements and restrictions on spending, I think that will be the case. But uh, the House is remaining very, very stubborn on not letting President Biden get away with just spending whatever he wants. All right, before we let you go, the opportunities with mining and what's happening with China as well. Absolutely. So China um, came out of lockdown, lengthy lockdowns at the start of this year, and they've come back at a really slow pace and a lot weaker than expected. And now that obviously accounts to and impacts our iron ore in Australia because 60% uh, of our goods exported to China is iron ore. So recently we saw the price of iron ore tank 8% in a week purely because China's steel authority have told steelmakers in the region to stop output because the domestic price of steel is so low and because of that uh, we've seen iron ore stockpiles at all of our ports in Australia because they've stopped importing iron ore and as a result we're going to see we've seen tough times we've seen the price of iron ore come down from those highs last year um, because demand is so weak and obviously China has a housing crisis as well so this has really impacted the the concentrated stocks like BHP Rio Tinto but there are market there are mining opportunities in like the likes of uh, Fortescue Metals Group and also mineral resources and Minres is a big one for us at Bell Potter and Bell Direct because it has diversification. It has uh, gas exploration, iron ore and lithium. And lithium is still the word in 2023. We've seen it bottom out this week and the outlook forward and the demand for EVs is just driving it higher over the coming years. All right, yes, plenty to unpack there and uh, interesting to see the outcome. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, thanks for so having much. me.